A Simple Design of Ocala is sponsored by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. Create with confidence. Continuing where we left off on part two, I need to cut the panel for the lid down to its final size. I start with cutting the width of the lid. From there, using my table saw sled, I cut it down to its final length. Once it's cut down, I need to route a small channel around the perimeter of the lid for the inlay banding. As you saw before on the sides of the box, I used the router kit to cut out the inlays for the top of the box. Once the profile of the inlay is routed out, I switch over to my palm router to clear away some of the waste. From there, I install the inlay as you saw me do on the sides of the box. Okay, on the lid, I went ahead and routed a groove for the uh, inlay banding that is about an inch and a quarter in from each edge. And I'm not going to put the inlay banding in just yet. I'm going to wait to last to do that. Uh, but what I did was in the center, I went ahead and did the inlay of pecan, uh, kind of an outline square. And now I'm getting ready to route a, another inlay within that pecan square. And this particular inlay is going to be another one of the ornate patterns that I have. Uh, and that is going to be inlaid with mahogany. And the banding the, uh, that will go around the perimeter is a mahogany and pecan simple banding as well. So, like I said, I'll do that. The banding strips last. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and get the cavity, the negative side of the next inlay part done. And then I'll go ahead and get that mahogany and lay in there. And then once all the lid is completely finished, then I'll go ahead and do the edge profile. And I, like I said earlier in the video, I still haven't decided exactly what I want to do with that. As soon as I get all the inlays in and really am able to take a look at the lid, I can kind of visualize or picture how I want it to look or what I want the final bit to look like. So let's get this lid uh, knocked out and get, get it on top of the box and really get a look at this thing. When it comes to the inlay banding, I miter all four corners to outline the perimeter of the box. The pieces simply fit into that routed groove. From there, I take my card scraper and flush up that inlay banding with the top of the lid. And then take a little mineral spirits to clean up the lid to see if I missed any glue squeeze out. Once everything checks out, I can go ahead and start routing the outer edge. I decided to go with a chamfer bit for the profile on the outside edge of the lid. For this box project, Rockler sent me over a set of Vertex solid extruded lid supports, as well as a set of four Vertex solid extruded small feet, and a set of four large feet, all in a set and nickel finish. Now the great thing about these Vertex feet are they're interchangeable. They can be used as knobs or feet. The four smaller feet I'm going to use as the knobs for the drawers, and then the larger feet will be the feet for the box. The smaller feet are installed simply by drilling a quarter inch hole and gluing them into place. The larger feet take a 5 16 inch hole and glue it into place. I'll be epoxy in mine. 
So now that we have the box pretty much together, and we just finished the profile on the lid, we're going to go ahead and start installing the hardware. I'm going to start with the hinges first, get them installed, and then we'll work on the feet and the knobs. Now I'll leave a link to these products in the description of the video. They're really solid. The lid supports open to a 90 degree position and they are just very well made. I really like them. I think the satin nickel is really going to stand off great on this uh, dark chocolate walnut. The walnut for the box, as it's sanded and all, has a real light color, but when it gets that clear finish on it, it really just turns into a deep dark chocolate. So all together, I think it's going to turn out well. So let's go ahead and get everything installed. To install the lid supports, I start by routing out the mortises for each hinge. Once the router work is done, I switch over to a chisel and clean up the corners to square them off. Once the mortises on the lid are done, I do the same procedures for the box. Starting with a palm router, then a hand chisel to clean up the corners. So now I'm laying out the marks for the knobs of the box. Uh, the two smaller drawers are going to get one knob in the center, and then the larger drawer is going to get two knobs. And I'm going to line them up, uh, the two knobs in the lower drawer, I'm going to line them up with the knobs in the smaller drawers above them. The knobs, as I said, are going to be these small vertex, solid extrusion set nickel knobs. And I think they're really going to look good. So I've got the two smaller drawers marked out. I need to go ahead and mark out the larger drawer. And then it just takes a quarter inch bit. And I'm going to use a Forstner bit, a quarter inch Forstner bit, to uh, drill these holes, pilot holes, for the nubs of the feet to go into. And then I'll simply epoxy them in. The knobs fit in snugly, so I'm just going to tap them in. Very lightly. After installing the knobs, I take a little acetone to clean up any epoxy squeeze out that might have occurred. So now that we have the knobs installed, we can go ahead and start working on the feet of the box. Now for the feet, I am going back a half inch from the front and back and three quarters of an inch in from each edge, each side. And that's where the placement of my feet are going to be. When it comes to the drilling the holes for the feet of the box, I don't have a 5 16 inch Forstner bit, but I do have a 5 16 Brad point bit, which will give me close to the same results. I just got to make sure that I watch my depth. When drilling the holes for the feet, I use a piece of blue tape wrapped around the bit to act as a depth stop. I set a couple of blocks on top of the box to just, this is a five minute epoxy, so it won't take very long for it to set up. But I want to make sure that, you know, there's plenty of pressure on there and everything is seated nice and, and, and even. So I'll let it sit like this just for a few minutes and then I'll go back and clean up any little bit of squeeze out there uh, that occurred. All right, well, we can finally wrap this project up. The box itself received three coats of lacquer finish uh, rubbed out with some paste wax. 
just to give it a subtle satin finish, I would say. Um, the All the drawers and the insides were lined with a green velvet felt. The hardware, I, you know, I, I thought it was going to really just kind of make the box kind of just stand out and it really does it, it it i really really like the the satin nickel on the uh the dark walnut i think it came out looking well the top inlay with the finish and everything came out fine i'm really happy with the box overall um and i hope you guys enjoyed this project as i said uh the hardware for the feet the knobs and the hinges, they were provided to me by Rockwell, as well as the felt uh, on the inside. And that velvet felt, man, uh, it's nice. <laughs> I really like it. It's got a real soft touch to it. Um, and all of the drawers have that lining in there. But the box is roomy. It, it's, I'm trying to debate on whether or not I think I'm going to maybe put in some dividers on the top section. I don't know yet. I kind of like the openness, but at the same time, I might get some kind of ring holder or some kind of little divider in there that'll, uh, you know, hold different rings or some kind of jewelry. All in all, uh, it was a long project. I didn't get it done in time. I didn't get the video out on Wednesday like I normally do because there was a lot of steps with the inlays and the drawers and the drawer fronts and, and things like that. Um, as well as life on the outside of the shop. I had some things to do, so I wasn't able to meet my deadline on Wednesday. But, nevertheless, the video got done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build. And remember, now, this whole process and everything is to give you guys some kind of ideas and inspiration for building your own box and submitting it to the Christmas Box Build-Off Contest. Uh, the Christmas Box Build-Off Contest runs till December 3rd. Uh, you have until then to enter in a box, a jewelry box or keepsake box, uh, for a chance to win some great prizes from companies such as Rocker Woodworking and Hardware, as well as Laguna Tools, Woodworkers Guild of America, Assemble Design of Ocala, and the United Federation of Woodworkers. So, I encourage you to get out there, get building, and submit a contest entry. Um, uh, you'll have lots of fun and a chance to win some really great prizes. <laughs> uh, all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, see you soon.